Hey everybody, this is Everyday Nerdy, and today we'll be 3D modeling the reticulating hand finger thing. So, the hinges will be all snap-on, hopefully, and this video will be about the inner hinge part of the finger with the outer hinge, where like these pieces are. So, first you gotta do the circle for the inner hinge, inner hinge and then you, we got an offset that we're gonna be doing, so it's gonna be for the clearance of it's kind of hard to explain so bear with me when I do this and as I create this sketch that I'm doing I prefer to mirror things so at least I know like what I do on the one side can happen on the other side so that's why we have only one side where I'm doing the lines and then I'm gonna create a mirror line I like to trim things so I trim and this whole thing will have for this inner hinge well it's the inner hinge plus the out part that I'll be doing all at once because the goal is to do one sketch that once you extrude it and do all that fancy stuff you can just copy paste copy paste copy paste because like the finger repeats itself over and over That's how the hand is um, maybe a bit hard to visualize but you'll see it so sometimes I like to use construct the lines because they're easier to when you're using like a mirroring tool as you can see or so when you do a regular line, if I want to extrude it, the regular line is included in it, in an extruding piece, and I don't like that. So I'll use, that's when I'll switch between construct lines, but sometimes I get stuck and I have to re-click construct line. But watch, I'm about to mirror, hopefully. And yeah, see? Click and boom. So that's how, now, here you have an inner hinge piece, which somewhere here should be circled, and the outer piece that you'll see. And then this part here somewhere is where you'll be extruding a clearance of for the inner hinge. So here is the inner hinge being extruded, which I'm about to do. do, do, do. It looks nice. And then now here is gonna be the outer hinge, which would be like these parts. I don't know if you can see these parts. And then now that we have that set up, you got to do a clearance for the inner part to enter the outer part. There's a lot of inner and outer. And to do that, that's why I drew that line. That's kind of like past all the circle. So, because when you do a hinge, you need to have that bending ability. So there has to be a cutaway for the outer hinge. This is really kind of hard to explain now that I think about it. I spent a lot of time just looking at other models and trying to figure out how they did things. But now that the hinges are done, well not the hinges, but like the square parts, you can create a mid plane. And then on that mid plane is what I'm going to create. I'm going to use revolve circle tool so I can create the spear that creates the ball hinge for when something rotates. So this is kind of, I think, is it my first time using the revolve tool? I've used it before, but I've never really found that much use in it, which is naive to say. But then this is pretty good. So here I'm just adding on to the project tool, which I found pretty useful. So when, when you don't want to use the models, when you're doing sketches, sometimes they get in the way and you can just project the outline of the model into your sketch, which is really neat. I just found that out with this. Um, okay. So do, do, do. Do. What am I doing here? Hmm. Oh, I'm adjusting the numbers because I messed it up. I think that's going to one millimeter. Oh yeah, because when I first did it, I made it too big, and then I had to adjust it. Um, the one thing I will say that I, you'll see it when I have the video of me putting the assembling the finger is the offsets that I made for the spear could have probably been a little bit bigger. I did like 0.05-ish millimeters and I think 0.2 is too big, at least for mine, and maybe a 0.1 would have been better. Because so when you have the, the spear, that you make for the hinge. You need a little bit more clearance for when you're putting the ball part into the hinge 
but you don't want enough clearance where you, you can pull it out. So that's where it gets tricky and it kind of depends on the printer. So I did a one fourth rule or whatever I made the diameter for the circle, I would do one fourth of that. And that's where I would start drawing a line that would I would use to revolve and I would extrude that around, if that makes any sense. I saw most people did it around the one fourth size of the spear, which is why I think I have it at, oh, I can't read, that's too far. But that's one fourth, the, the height that I have it over here. So, and then this mistake that I did here is I'm supposed to also include the offset circle, which I didn't. So when you see me cut and revolve, I won't be including the offset circle, but I think I added, I know, yeah, I see it right here. I added that later in this video. So here we're revolving the circle, boom, it's revolved. And then now we got to cut it and give it an entrance. So, so this is a mistake, as you can see here, I didn't include the offset of the circle and you just always got to make sure you're cutting the right, um, bodies sometimes i mess up and i lose track of what bodies i have open so and you know you combine them and then voila is there 